Good morning, Gators! Good morning, Gators! Yeah, that's what we like to hear. So welcome, welcome to SF State. Um, and welcome to the beginning of your first year at SF State. We are super excited to have you here. We hope you're excited as well, although you might be a little bit cold right now. Um, we have Carl the Fog with us this morning, and as he would say, welcome to Fogest. It will get better, it will get better. So, we're gonna try something out really quickly. Uh, we're gonna try a little cheer to get us going, get us pumped up a little bit this morning. So, I'm gonna say the word go, and you all are then gonna say gators, all right? So ready, go! Gators. Go! Gators. Go! When I say purple, you say gold. Purple. Gold. Purple. Gold. All right, awesome. I love it. You now know all of our cheers. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to try to keep, I'm the MC this morning. My name is Mary Ann Begley. I am the Interim Associate Vice President and Dean of Students here at SF State. I am happy to be your Dean of Students. I'm here for you. Um, so whenever you need assistance, whenever you need help, just know that you can come to my office at any point in time and we will be happy to assist you. So know that you're not in this alone. Um, but I'm not going to speak a lot today. I'm just serving as the MC of this event and my job is to keep it going so that we can finish on time and get people off to the other sessions that we have today. So with that said, I'm going to keep moving right along. I do want to do some recognition of a few people who put this whole event together, and that would be the five days of events for Welcome Days. They have put in tons of effort to make sure that you have a really good experience here at SF State, and especially you're welcome to SF State. So I do want to take just a minute to recognize those individuals, and I promise you I will keep it moving. All right, so Sethi Ashaf, Ash oh, I messed up the first one. Sethi Ashaf, Asbaha, there we go, I got it right this time, from SF Build, Ami Barnes from Associated Students, Michael Beattie from Enterprise Risk Management, Larry Varela from Student Activities and Events, Nanette Davey from the Office of the Dean of Students, Luis De Paz from Student Outreach Services, Johanna Duarte from Residential Life, Evan Goffel from Fraternity and Sorority Life, Doris Bent from Student Outreach Services, Shamina Harris from the Office of the Dean of Students, Mark Haramia from Associated Students, Ryan Jones from Alumni Relations, Kathleen Kelly from Office of the Dean of Students, Andrew Locke from University Corporation, Horace Montgomery from Associated Students, April Joy Nietos from Associated Students, Vernon Piccinati from Student Activities and Events, Tony Robbins from the Office of the Dean of Students, Maya Saldana from Associated Students, Connie Tallarico from the Office of the Dean of Students, Jordan Thomas from Associated Students, Lee Twyman from Student Activities and Events, Brian Stewart from the Office of the Dean of Students. I do want to take a special moment to thank Brian for all of his efforts. He is the mastermind behind, behind all of this. A lot of you know Brian from orientation this summer. How many of you remember Brian from orientation? Nobody? Go! One person. Let's try that again. Go! Purple. Purple. All right, okay, you're still with me. All right, wonderful. So I do want to a uh, special thank you to all of our university partners who have helped us with this as well. A special shout out to our academic technology um, staff who helped us with the technology needs for this morning. Um, so we're gonna keep this moving right along. If you actually tweet, Instagram, Snap, whatever you do, make sure that you follow us on Welcome Days. We are, you can use the hashtag SF State Welcome. Um, you can also follow us at, at life at SF State. So make sure that you follow us, tweet your pictures, snap your pictures, what have you, we want you to follow us. The other thing we would mention is that if you have not already, please download the guidebook app. That's the wrong sheet. If you have not downloaded the guidebook app, please make sure you do, because this is where our schedule is of events for the entire rest of this, um, this event. So please make sure that you uh, download this, because otherwise you're gonna be a little bit lost. If you do need a paper copy, I do have paper copies. Um, so come see me after the event. All right, we are gonna keep moving this along. I am so pleased 
to in introduce you to one of your fellow students. Um, so Jordan Thomas is gonna be our next speaker. He is double majoring in psychology and communications. He has been very involved and engaged on campus since his arrival three years ago. Last year, he served as the sophomore representative for Associated Students. This year, he serves as the Vice President for Internal Affairs, also with Associated Students. In addition, he may look familiar to some of you because he's also a resident assistant in the residential community for the village at Centennial Square. He strives to be an advocate for all students and their success, involvement, and connectedness, connectedness to campus. He's very proud to be a Gator and to represent the purple and gold. Purple. Gold. Purple. Gold. All right, it's my honor to introduce to you Jordan Thomas. Hello. So welcome again, new Gators, as well as family and friends. My name is Jordan Thomas. I'm still in disbelief to say I'm going into my third year of college here at San Francisco State University. I still remember coming into college my first year and not knowing what to expect and worrying about making friends and the difficulty of my upcoming classes as well as living away from my family and having a roommate I've never met before. My first year here was full of new experiences and adventures that I never thought would happen. My favorite memories include just being with new friends and exploring the beautiful city we live in and being immersed in the diverse culture surrounding our school. SFC gave me the outlets to not only excel academically, but socially and as an activist on and off campus as well. I've been given opportunities here that have surprised me in so many ways, yet have helped me grow into the person I am today. From coming into the campus undeclared to now, be, to now double majoring in psychology and communications with a focus in human resources and industrial organizational psychology, from being completely uninvolved to now being in multiple organizations such as associate students as a representative and now vice president, residential life as a resident assistant for two years, and many more I hope to come in this next year. And lastly, coming in with a handful of friends and not being able to walk around campus knowing somewhere ev everywhere I go. Staying active on campus and being optimistic of all the changes that have come in the past couple of years is what pushes me to continue on and have so much, such great experiences. I must say, there's no way I could get here on campus without a strong support system. To the friends and family in the audience, as students and growing adults on this campus, we need your support to continue to push on through things. I will confess, college is not the easiest thing, but knowing you have a friend or family member to call at home and help makes such a huge difference. I will end with saying, I am extremely proud to be a Gator here at SF State. Knowing I am growing within an inclusive and diverse campus that challenges me academically and within my societal and political views is something I thrive on. I've never felt out of place or considered this community not for me. Every aspect of this campus will not only change you, but help you evolve into what you always wanted to be. I will leave you with this quote that my mom had recently told me by James Baldwin. Our crown has already been bought and paid for. All we need to do is wear it. Put your crown on, Gators. Don't be afraid to do what you love. Experience new things. Question everything. Take classes that are outside of your comfort zone. Get involved in different organizations and make friends that you want to keep throughout the journey. I'm thankful for my time here at SF State so far and for feeling I'm not just part of a campus or community, but a family that continues to help me excel in my future endeavors. Although we, we will not always have the same ventures, I'm confident and optimistic that we will grow as one. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful developing year at San Francisco State University. Thank you. All right, when I say purple, okay, we're getting there. All right, by the end of this, I mean, you're all gonna be super excited and pumped up. I mean, I'm, I'm just, this is my goal. Nothing, nothing. Okay, all right, okay. So if you're already pumped up already, you will be by the time you hear this next speaker. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce you to our Vice President for Student Affairs and Enrollment Management and Title IX Coordinator, Dr. Lolo Hong. Dr. Hong began working at SF State in 2014, and in a short period of time, she has proven to be a tireless champion for overall student success and access. Over her career, Dr. Hong has served in a variety of senior leadership roles at Louisiana State University, Shepherd College, University of Wisconsin-Madison, and Arizona State University. 
She came to us from the University of Hawaii Hihilo, where she served as the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs from 2008 to 2014. She holds a Bachelor's in Psychology from Amherst College, a Master's in Public Health, Health from Yale University, and a PhD in Educational leadership, leadership and Research from Louisiana State University. She is a passionate and energetic leader and trainer in the areas of violence prevention, social justice, and leadership. She can also be found online as a level 100 human warlock in the world of Warcraft, and she serves as staff for two cats. From personal experience, I can tell you that she is a very caring individual and a wonderful mentor. Please join me in offering a warm welcome to Dr. Lolo Hong. All right, go! Go! Purple! Purple! Okay, we're getting better. <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep at this. Welcome to the Gator Class of 2020. We're so excited to have you! Where's the Class of 2020? Shout out! Woo! Alright, where's your families? Woo! Your families are even more excited than you. <laughs> they help to get you here. All right, I'm delighted to add uh, my words of welcome here. We are so glad to have you. In fact, I tweeted this morning, I'm so excited to have students back on campus. It feels like a college campus again. So let me show you about what I do, because what on earth is a vice president for student affairs and enrollment management? You don't have one of those, usually, uh, wherever you come from. So let me just share a little bit about what I do. So there's no doubt that the most important experience and the defining moments of your life here at SF State for the next four years will likely be your, your faculty, your classroom experiences, uh, the classes that you take for your major, uh, the, the connections you make in that academic environment. But we also recognize that you are complete human beings. And so I'm happy to say that I get to work with all of those, what we call out of classroom programs and services. And so this ranges, for example, from the admissions office, which each of you has had to touch to be able to get here and become a student, to financial aid, the registrar's office, uh, disability accommodations, residential life. Uh, it includes things like the first year experience and student activities and events, campus recreation. We're about to open within the next year a new Mashouf Wellness Center. So all of those things are part of what we consider uh, the support services that help to enhance your total experience during your time here as a student. You also heard from Marianne that I serve as your Title IX coordinator, and it'd be pretty hard to, if you've been watching the news or, or reading newspapers or uh, following along on all kinds of online social media sites, to not hear about how significant Title IX is now on campuses. So I serve in that role as well, and with those responsibilities, I work to help and work in collaboration with students to do what we can and within our power to prevent sexual violence from happening on campus, and then unfortunately when it does, to make sure that we respond to those individuals who are impacted in a caring, compassionate manner. Uh, we work very tirelessly to strive towards gender equity and to make this campus as safe as it can be, but it is a work in progress and we'll be working together in the coming years and we hope that you'll be part of the solution. And I want to reiterate what Marianne said, we are here to support you, to help you achieve your goals and your dreams. You are here at the beginning of your journey for the rest of your life, and we want to help you make as much as possible the best decisions you can, and also be here to help you pick up the pieces when you are going to make those inevitable mistakes. As you heard from Jordan, college is hard. If it were easy, everyone would do it. So, now that you're here, what are the things that I would want to share with you as just some pieces of advice, some pearls of wisdom, if you will, to help maximize your experience. The first one would be, push yourself to the very limits of your ability, whether they be intellectual or otherwise. The research clearly shows that students who push themselves to succeed are the ones who are going to make it through college. And this means doing more than what you said, thought you could ever imagine. So I want you to think about, what do you think you can do? And then I want you to do more than that, right? So I don't want you to go, oh, 
I mean, I can take that class. That would be too hard. I want you to go, that class is going to be really hard, and I'm going to take it because I can do it. So when you push yourself to achieve the things that you didn't think you could do, you learn to find exactly what it is that you are capable of. In fact, students who immerse themselves in the college academic experience can overcome any shortcomings that you may have had in your academic preparation. In other words, forget what you bring. That is the past. Look instead to now and the future, which is in your control, in your charge. Focus on that. You are admitted based on the fact that we believe you have the potential to succeed here and contribute at SF State. Believe in that. Believe that we have some sense of what that might take and we're here to support you. And then ask yourself, what do you think you can accomplish? And then set the bar for yourself even higher. We believe that making mistakes isn't a sign of failure. It's the journey on the way to success and learning all that you can. Now I want to be clear, we want you to graduate in four years. I'm sure your families would like you to graduate in four years. And you should plan on that. That's part of setting the bar high. So this means that you'll need to take 15 credits every fall and every spring semester to be able to graduate on time. And if you don't take those 15 credits, you'll need to make sure that you take the credits you need during summer session. In fact, graduating on time is the single most important pathway you can take to reducing the cost of college. And the sooner that you can graduate, the sooner you can get out there into the world and make a difference and live the life that you want for yourself and your family and your community. I'd like to share with you as you think about pushing yourself to the limits, think of these words from Mahatma Gandhi. Live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. So that's the first thing. Push yourself intellectually as much as you can. Two, and you heard this already, don't wait to ask for help. The reality is that even the smartest of us, the most talented of us, will need help at some point in college. And reaching out sooner rather than later can mean the difference between passing or failing, between the A and B or C and D. The research also shows that students do better when they find classmates or friends to study with and share homework with, now no cheating, okay? <laughs> but talking to other students and being in conversation and dialogue about the classwork that you are studying or the class material that you are struggling with, that can help to improve your outcomes as a student. And so instead of trying to figure out that complex math problem or science question on your own, no matter how well you did in high school or before, college will be harder and every single one of you will benefit from getting help. Nobody can do it alone. So whether you need academic assistance, emotional support, or help because you're experiencing a medical illness, please reach out. We might ask you questions, but we will not judge. And please, go see your faculty during office hours. They want to help you, and they open their doors so that you may have access to them. For additional guidance and assistance, you can also stop by any number of the offices that are in academic affairs, student affairs, enrollment management, or administration and finance. We are here to help you successfully navigate this great university. So don't wait to ask for help. Three, have the courage to expand your worldview and to leverage what I like to call the power of one. Never again will you have the kind of freedom you have now to take courses on a wide range of topics, to explore opposing points of view, while really testing out your own beliefs. You can learn a new language, study abroad in a country where everyone looks different from you and speaks a different language. Our campus embraces social justice as a core principle. Will you speak up on behalf of those who are disenfranchised to interrupt hurtful, degrading, or bullying remarks? And will you have the testicles of steel or ovaries of platinum to ask tough questions of your friends when they're planning to cheat on an exam? Or raising marijuana in the residence hall room, perhaps, to fund educational expenses? Or talking about using a date rape drug on a house guest that night? Check, 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 check. Are people awake? Check, check. Are people alive? I just said some stuff that didn't get a response. OK. Go! Purple! Purple! Think about what's happening across the world in our own country. Think about the conflict that's happening all over the globe. Thinking about Black Lives Matter and how that movement has showed up in so many, many communities, including our own Bay Area one here. 
What will be your role? What will be your response? Will you remain involved or will you stay an observer? Here at SF State, we don't want to tell you how to think on these important issues, but we do expect you to think something about them critically and reflect, developing your own informed opinions and views and the deciding how you will choose and how you will act is one of the most important things that you will learn while you're here in college. To share from Paulo Freire in thinking about the power of one, washing one's hands of the conflict between the powerful and the powerless means to side with the powerful, not to be neutral. Do not underestimate how much you can make a difference to changing this world. Four, think both about your responsibility to this community as well as your rights. So how many of you kind of read some stuff about San Francisco State from this spring, the experience that we had? Raise your hand. You saw us in social media, read about the activities that happen on campus. Okay, I encourage you actually to check those out. Many of those were challenging times for us as a campus, but I would also share that they define what the SF State experience is for our students here. They represent something very unique and distinctive about the San Francisco State University experience, and that we are grappling very deeply and in very genuine and foundational ways with some important questions about what it means to be a society and a community. One of the most invaluable aspects that you will have of coming to college is the chance to expand your worldview. But it's also to be what I like to call the crucible of learning. The best parts of college that I remember are encountering people whose ideas you absolutely hate. I want you to think about that for a moment, all right? I would get kind of juiced up. My adrenaline would get going. I would get like really hyped up. I would be alert. And what it did is it helped me to understand where do I stand in this world? By confronting someone who challenged what I believed and what I thought to be true, I was able to further refine what I believed and what I thought to be true. So we encourage you to embrace that. And the wonderful thing is there's that amazing right called freedom of speech, freedom of expression. And I wanna remind you that that right extends to everyone, not just you. So that means there will be times when people will say things with which you disagree vehemently. There will be times when people say things that are hateful, and I mean hateful. And I wanna emphasize that just because things are hateful or things that you disagree with, it does not make them illegal. The amazing thing is that that individual's ability to say those things is the same ability that you have to say something back. The most powerful antidote to speech that you don't like is more speech your own. So I like to say, share the air. So we encourage you, get a tough skin, learn to speak up, hear other people's views, give them a chance to express themselves, and then you take your turn to also share your ideas. That is the core, that is the essence of a lively democracy, and that represents the very best of civic engagement. We encourage you to do debate, dialogue, disagreement in a way that is courteous, humane, and respectful. One of the things that I encourage you to think about is, just because you may, does that mean you should? So you do have rights to free speech and freedom of expression. And one of the things that we'd like you to think about as you go through colleges, just because you have the right to be rude, the right to be discourteous, and the right to say hateful things, will you say them? So the choice is also what is very powerful embedded in that right. Here's a quote from a former colleague of mine that I'd like to share, and he talks about this dilemma that we have as individuals to choose between rights and responsibilities or meld them together. He says, in the language of rights, yes, drinking is a problem. He's writing about alcoholism. But there's no problem because everyone should take care of himself or herself. But in the languages of caring and community, on the other hand, drinking is a problem because we are all interconnected, involved, and affected by each other's behaviors, and because we all, through the norms we establish and the values we live, influence each other's choices. When you have a right that is hard won as that of free speech and freedom of expression, use it wisely and use it to shape the world for better. Last. Abide by the values and policies of this community. 
If you check out our strategic plan online, you will find out that Essex State has identified courage, equity, life of the mind, community, and resilience as our defining values. Purple. Go. Purple. Go. 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 Those are our values. Right, when you say Gator, when you say purple and gold, you are talking about SF State in symbolic language. You are now SF State. Your words and refraction actions reflect on this campus at all times and everywhere you go. If you do something tremendous, the press will likely identify you, a student at SF State. If you make a horrible mistake and the press finds out and they write about you, they will likely say, a student at SF State, just like they would an administrator or a faculty member. You are not required to be here. There's no compulsion. Now, some of you may say, my mama or my daddy made me come. And some of you, my grandma or grandpappy made me come. Or somebody else in your family that cares about you may have made you come. But legally, you are not compelled to be here. You choose to be here. How do you choose to be here? Make some noise. Yeah. Choose to be here. Make some noise. Yeah. All right. So you choose to be in this house. And when you enter this house, you agree to abide by the rules of this house and uphold them. Make sure you become familiar with the Code of Student Conduct and all the other university policies to which you're accountable. Just like driving laws, just because you don't know doesn't mean you're not accountable. And we encourage you to support our efforts. You're a part of the community. We cannot be everywhere. There are many of you, you all are everywhere. And together, we can help uphold our collective values and policies and rules and expectations. In fact, I'm going to pick out one particular rule that I think is very helpful. This, there are many rules to go by, but this is my favorite. It's very simple. You may have heard it. If it doesn't belong to you, then don't touch it or take it without first getting permission. Right, pretty simple. This will work on so many things. Property theft is an issue, just like every other college campus across the country. The irony is we're most likely to be targeted by our fellow students, by our fellow community members, right? So again, ain't yours, don't touch it, don't take it without permission. We know that sexual misconduct is unfortunately a very important part of our life. Affirmative consent means you ask, you ask, okay? Academic dishonesty, that also is an issue. If it's not your answer, don't take it. Right? So simple, simple thing. So we encourage you to think about in those moments of truth, and in fact, in those private moments when no one else will see, or no one else will know, or no one else will hear, what will you do, and will you do the right thing? And we believe the values here at SF State, when you ascribe to them, you will do the right thing, no matter how big or small the audience is. So what can you expect of us? We will be here to root for you, to cheer for you, and advocate for you, and do our best to provide you with the tools that you will need to have a chance at being successful in college. Now, you have to use the toolkit, but we won't hide the toolkit or keep tools out of the toolkit. We'll give you the whole toolkit, and we're even willing to show you how to use the toolkit and give you a new toolkit if you lose the toolkit we gave you, okay? We're giving you a toolkit this week, so thank you for coming to welcome me because it's part of arming and filling your toolkit. Second, we will make every effort that we can to actively listen to you and your issues and concerns when you bring them up, no matter how difficult it might be for us to hear. We want to know what are the barriers to success as a student and address them in a timely manner so that you are not negatively impacted. Similarly, we will listen to your suggestions to improve what we do and how we do it. Now, we're working on this, and I think we're getting better, but we invite you to give us that feedback. Again, do it right in that kind, courteous way, but please do it. Feel free to step up and speak up. Third, we commit to you that we will always act with the best intentions at heart and hope that our impact is just as good, if not better. We strive to promote, at all times, your well-being, your safety, and your capacity to be a successful student both in and out of the classroom. It may sometimes feel like we're the enemy, but we're asking for your faith and trust that sometimes being tough on you is the very thing that we may need to do to help push you to that next level. We also commit that we will strive to be inclusive and respectful of each and every one of you, regardless of your background or identity. 
We will be sensitive to the fact that our beliefs and cultural reality may not be your cultural reality and beliefs, but that we can understand each other without having to be the same or even to agree. We promise that we will be honest and forthright to you, with the to forthright with you to the fullest extent allowed. The things that will impact you, you have the right to know about. So it is our job to inform you when things are going to change, issues that are impacting the campus, and anything that will make a difference in your ability to be academically or socially engaged, we owe it to you to ensure that we provide timely communication. And last, we commit that we will be humane and kind and civil and courteous at all times, even if you are not. We will role model the types of interpersonal interactions that we expect you and everyone else on this campus to engage in. And again, as always, if we fail to honor this, please let us know. I'd like to close by sharing this statement from Dr. Freeman Hablowski, who is the president at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. I'm not sure he wrote these words, but he is the individual that I heard speak them, and I cannot find an individual to attribute them to. But they have stuck with me for many, many years. They are so powerful, and I'd like to share them with you. Watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. Watch your character. It becomes your destiny. We look forward to seeing where the world leads you and where you will lead the world. Go Gators and welcome class of 2020! Thank you, Dr. Hong. Uh, thank you so much for those wise, wise words. Um, moving right along, um, you know, Dr. Hong mentioned that we have uh, several values on campus, community, resilience, courage, equity, and life of the mind. And our next speaker is one of the, the people on campus that I can say definitely embodies those values. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Jennifer Summit, who is our interim provost and vice president for academic affairs. She has uh, served the campus faithfully since 2013, starting as the Dean of Undergraduate Education and Academic Planning. She came to SF State from Stanford University, where she served in a variety of roles, including Professor of English, Chair of the English Department, and the Director of Integrated Learning. She also served as an American Council of Education Fellow at San Jose State University. Dr. Summit received her Bachelor's Degree in English from Vassar College, and her Master's and PhD in English from Johns Hopkins. Please help me welcome Dr. Summit to the stage. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It's good to see you all here. How many of you were there yesterday at the parents uh, and new students brunch? A fair number, great. OK, well, good to see you again. And um, you've gotten a lot of information over the last couple of days, and you're going to get even more today. So I'd like to ask you a question. Why are you here? I don't just mean, why are you here sitting in a cold chair and a cold morning in uh, foggest, as Marianne says, but why are you here? Why are you at university? What are you here for? I'd like you to ask that question of yourself often, every day, every class that you take. I'd like you to look back and ask yourself, what am I here for? And ask that question, keep listening to the answers that you give yourself, because as you grow, so will your answers. And I promise you, those answers are going to power you through your time here, during the hard times, during the challenges, during the boring times. And sometimes the boring times are harder to deal with than the hard times. But keep asking that question, because your education is about asking big questions. We ask them a lot here. Our version of that question is, 
what is undergraduate education for? We want the best for our students. We want them to go out and know that they have the very best education possible. But what does that education look like? We're preparing you for a future that none of us knows what it's going to look like. How do we give you the skills and the abilities, the values, the confidence in order to become leaders of that unseen future? Well, where we ask this question and where that question lands is general education. Now, GE doesn't get a lot of love <laughs> on college campuses. Um, and I know this from talking to students, and I ask them about the classes they're taking, and they'll say, mm, I'm just taking care of my GEs. Before I get to my major, I'm just checking off my GEs. I want to ask you to open up to a different way of thinking about general education. Yesterday, those of you who were at the brunch heard me talk about how to change, how to, how to uh, choose your major and the many fantastic majors that we offer here, the fabulous faculty that we're, we're making available to you all across the university, all across the curriculum. But I want you to think about GE as the place where all those faculty, all those minds come together to answer this question in a way that unites us. That is, what is undergraduate education for? What does a well-educated well person look like? Now, your GE requirements represent the culmination of years of passionate debate. If you don't believe me, ask some of your faculty. Faculty have argued, debated about these GE requirements for a long time with deep feeling because those really represent what the university wants for all of its graduates. I want to call your attention to one group of courses that we call SF State Studies, because these are the areas that we define as critical to any student. They're also distinctive to San Francisco State. You're not going to find these anywhere else, and we hope that when you graduate, these courses and the work, the thinking that you've done in them is going to mark you as a Gator wherever you go. So the SF State studies are distinct areas of questioning and concern. They tell you what we want you to care about and to think about. We want you to be aware of the challenges of environmental sustainability. We want you to be open to global perspectives. We want you to be awake to the imperative of equity, particularly in our diverse society, of American ethnic and racial minorities. And we want you to be tireless in the pursuit of social justice. These values are urgent and alive here, and they bring us together. They infuse the curriculum in GE, but also in the majors. We want them to overlap. We want them to stay with you throughout your time here. These aren't subject matters. These are not things that you can memorize or study with or tuck in your pocket. These are living questions. We want you to ask yourself. We want you to grapple with them throughout your time here. They challenge you to confront hard questions, to have hard conversations. But in the end, being educated isn't about the information that you take away. It's about the questions that you ask. And so I ask you again, the question I hope that you will continue to ask throughout your time here, why am I here? What am I here for? I wish you an exciting, engaging, stimulating, challenging first year for the rest of your lives. Welcome.
All right, last but certainly not least, it is my pleasure to introduce you to SF State's 13th president, Dr. Leslie Wong. Uh, Dr. Wong has be is beginning his fifth year as president of SF State and has established himself as a champion of our students and for our students. Becoming, uh, before coming to SF State, he served eight years as president of Northern Michigan University in Marquette, Michigan. Prior to his service at Northern Michigan, he held faculty positions at Pierce College in Southern California and Evergreen State College in Washington State. He then transitioned into administra administrative roles at Evergreen State College, the University of Southern Colorado, and Valley City State University in North Dakota. Dr. Long holds a bachelor's degree in psychology from Gonzaga University, a master's in experimental psychology from Eastern Washington University, and a PhD in educational psychology from Washington State University. Please join me in welcoming our president, Dr. Long. Hello, I've got a couple of questions because I, I want to just share uh, just a small anecdote with you. How many of you are the first in your co family to go to college? A lot of hands. In 2020, how many of you will likely be the first in your family to graduate from college? Okay, terrific. Um, I'm going to tell a little story because in many ways you and I have a lot in common. Um, I'm an East Oakland kid. Um, when I got done with high school, I had told my high school counselor that I was thinking about going to college. And uh, in those days, long, long ago in another galaxy, uh, the only thing I could do at that time was read and hit a baseball. And it was stunning because the high school counselor turned to me and said, don't waste your parents' money. And I, it kind of fired me up because I was a little bit competitive at that moment. And uh, I thought, well, that's an unusual thing for a high school counselor to say to you when you want to go to college. And so I have not forgotten it because I'm sharing the story with you today. And many of you are motivated by a lot of great values, et cetera. How many of you know that your parents want you to go to school and to graduate? Awesome. That's terrific. So do my parents. My mother, uh, thir th uh, third grade education, worked the fields of California. Uh, my father, high school diploma, uh, got caught up in the exclusion laws when Chinese people weren't allowed to come into the, this country. They were very proud that I at least had the idea to go to college. But when the counselor told me not to waste my parents' money, I knew that my parents wanted me to go to school. So I'm going to cut it really short. Um, when I graduated from college, the first note I sent was to the high school counselor. And uh, although I did not invite him to my commencement. Um, then I thought, this is a pretty good deal. I, some people discovered that I had some, some abilities other than hitting a baseball. And um, I decided to go to graduate school, and I got a master's degree, and guess who I sent a notice to? My high school counselor. And I uh, never got a response. Uh, and then I thought, gee, I'm really on a good roll. Uh, I got a job teaching in a community college. I enjoyed the, the intellectual life. And then I got an offer to uh, get a doctorate degree, a PhD, and uh, married, I had children, uh, and I decided to do it. Uh, I thought it was a natural, a challenging thing to do. And so when I earned my doctorate, I did an interesting thing. I didn't invite him to come, uh, but I made an extra copy of my dissertation and I mailed it to him. And revenge is kind of a good feeling sometimes. And the good Lord did something because a couple of months after I sent him a copy of my dissertation, I ran into him getting on an airplane. And uh, he recognized me instantly. And I looked up at him and smiled and he pointed at me and he said, good job. And uh, that's all he said. And I, I didn't say a thing uh, to him. 
Uh, and I think he suddenly realized that maybe once in a while a high school counselor might make a mistake. Um, I really felt bad because I did invite him when I finally became a president of a university in Michigan. I invited him to my investiture and unfortunately they told me that he had passed away. And it was the first time I felt, you know, if anybody had given me a spine to do something, to tell me I could couldn't do something and I went and did it, it might have been that high school counselor. And so I think he's still in my camp somewhere uh, supporting me and wishing he had told me or given me better advice. So why am I telling you this story? Your resilience to get an education, to represent your families, to your, to your parents and grandparents, you have a lot of people supporting you, but you also have to develop your own sense of strength in yourself to persist. And some of you will do it with a lot of support. As you can see, I sort of took a lot of strength by wanting to show that high school counselor that he had made a mistake. And uh, I, I, you know, I just wish he was around. I would have liked to have said, how'd I do, right? Uh, and I think he would have said, you've done okay. So uh, I want to wish you the very, very best. Get engaged, get involved with friends, things outside your classroom, in the community. This is a place for you to find yourself, but more importantly, it's a place where you can learn how to own your own mind, right? Those are powerful words. Um, I, I want to offer you that as you begin your college education, you really begin your own enlightenment, and I think, I am confident that you are going to do well. I am confident that you will graduate, and I have no doubt that you will be successful in behalf of your families, your communities, but more importantly, uh, for yourself, and I wish you the best. Thank you. Go do it. Thank you all so very much for being here today and for our wonderful, wonderful speakers, of which I have not been one. My words are getting all twisted today. Um, thank you for being here. I do uh, want to remind you that the schedule is on guidebook. Um, and I do want to leave you with one other parting thought that I think sums up what you've heard here today. And it was interesting as we were checking people in this morning, I saw one of you, a new student, who had a shirt on that says, if you believe, you can. And I'm paraphrasing, but it said something along those lines. If you believe, you can. So the big message here is believe in yourself because you can do this and we are here to help you. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of Welcome Days. Have a great academic year. And go Gators! <laughs>